Hey, everybody, it's Granny. It's another Dishy Love Unbreakable with the podcast. It is Friday, TGLF, April 26th. What a show today, huh? 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 Got a little talk about all the sports, the Eagles draft pick, there's Phillies, the big Sixers were last night. Talk about Trump and all his troubles. I have a surprise for you. So a big surprise. Just wait till the surprise arrives. And uh, I've got to, I guess I haven't been on the air for about a week, huh? I would love to come. So let me take it back. First of all, I got to say, the person out there who watches the Unbreakable podcast, very loyal uh, viewer, listener, and I'm going to say hello, Allie. Allie works down at the uh, University of Pennsylvania, where I go down to see my great doctor, Dr. Callis. And Allie, I miss you every day when I was down there for a visit. I hope to see you in October. And uh, thanks for watching the book. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell everybody. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about this stuff. Let's talk about the check. Until our surprise. Uh, so he's in his tribe, as you know. And uh, they got this guy, Kepler, David Kepler, is uh, going to testify again for the fourth day, too. You know? And uh, my feeling is, is that, you know, this is his hush money play. And uh, they tried to quiet down Trump's relationship with these porno stars. Uh, and so it would have affect his election in you know, 2016. Well, I've said election, election. Well, whatever, let's just say. Hey, man. There he is. There's a surprise. Coco. Coco the Great. Yes, it's Coco. And uh, what in, Coco? Coco, don't be shy. Come to the show. All right, it's just how, um, well, you know, you know, Bud. Bud, here he is. Bud is the patron suit of the uh, show. There's our boat star. He was picked up the cake. Now that's not a real cake. It is a real uh, cake. Just a lot of And Bud is uh, wherever in my heart. I stole this Bud. We are actually right here on my desk with his whole theory for me. But you know, sometimes in life we have to. Feel the emptiness in your heart with joy. You know, and we there's too much sadness in there, there's too much crying. You know? Not good for anybody. Not good for me, Holly, not good for Katie, who kept looking for the buds to all around the house. We were all bummed out my Well, Bud is missed, and Bud will always be in our hearts. Always. In fact, we're planning, we're, we're buying a dogwood tree, how appropriate, dogwood tree, get it? Dogwood. And we're going to plant it in the backyard, which was Bud's old, old uh, domain, domain. He used to roam around there all, for 10 years. That was his territory. We're going to plant a tree for Bud in his honor so that he, his spirit will live on forever. But, we thought it would be a good idea if we got a puppy, and we did. His name is Coco, with an A. There's a big dispute going on all about that. Yeah, you know, I I named him Coco because, as you'll see, if we can get some little little ass back here, there he is. We're just talking about you, Coco. Come on up and see us, Coco. Uh we could see him in spot. Somebody splattered him with. The chocolate soup in the very things that people. Um, so I thought the full name would be Coco. C O C O A, right? The chocolate. His medical paper, he took him to the vet, he took, you know, everywhere. Uh, has C O C O. And I said, why is that? his name is Coco in a day? What the hell? They said, well, no. Coco, he says he's a boy. Coco it, with this an A is feminine. You take the A off, you chop the A off, and uh, 
and he's Coco, like James Coco, the actor. And I said, no, 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 no. He, his name is with an ad, get it right. So this is this debate going. And I said, I named him after chocolate. Chocolate has no gender. Chocolate's not male or female. Chocolate's chocolate, right? So this is an ongoing thing. You'll probably hear about this down the road. Coco, come in here. Everything that goes on is uh, with or without it. Anyway, Katie loves him when when he's not bugging her. You know, he's only five months old. You know, he's not even a half year old. And he's very smart. He's picking up everything on my bed, sticky notes. He's turned the TV on and off and changed the channel numerous times because he steps on the remote. Uh, he's got uh, his, a lot of his toys on my bed. You can see Lammy there. I see Lammy. Hi, uh, Lammy. We always have to go in and see what he's doing. He's pretty well housebroken, but he uh, tends to, uh, to uh, chew on things as puppies do. And uh, he's a trip. He's a trip. And Katie loves him. There he is, Coco the Great. Loco Coco. Loco Coco. Um, and uh, there he goes again. It's like a little toy, you know? In and out, in and out, in and out, constantly up and down the steps. We have little doggy stairs going up to my bed that Bud used to use in his older days. Up and down, up and down, up and down. He's bringing a lot of happy news to us, you know, and to Katie. When he's not trying to nurse her, what the hell? He can't. <laughs> Okay, uh, Coco happens to be a mixture of uh, Yorkie, mostly Yorkie, and the Maltese. Well, Katie happens to be the same thing, same breed. And so he thinks Katie is his mother, even though Katie's seven and a half years old. So he's always trying to suck, suck on her. And we're saying, stop sucking on her. Katie's even saying, he's okay. He could stay. But he's got to stop sucking. He's sucking sucks. Anyway, anyway, so he's a joy. Anyway, that was the that's the surprise. And Coco will probably be on the show a lot as time goes on. I don't know if he'll take over Bud's duties as being the director, producer, writer. Bud did my hair. Bud picked up her clothes. Bud did, Bud did everything. He was my sidekick and my Ed McMahon on the show. Maybe Coco will uh, evolve into that role in time. But he's only five months old. I don't want to put too much pressure on the door, you know? Uh, he'll, he'll ease into it. Anyway, so that's Coco. Uh, so I was talking about Trump, right? Trump's up in New York, his trial, the pecker guy. Well, first of all, you put this guy on the stand, he's going to be pissed off as he is because of his, his name, Hecker, Hecker. Can you imagine having a name like that all your life? I'd be pissed off too. I mean, when he was a kid, he's in the schoolyard and the other kids are saying, hey, you, Hecker, Heckerhead, get over here. I want to talk to you. Yeah, hey, you, Heckerhead. That's all right for me, right? That's who it is, Heckerhead. Uh, no, I don't know. It's, it's not going well. Uh, <laughs> there was even a, a talk earlier in the week that the uh, Secret Service were preparing for Trump possibly going to jail. Now, that judge up there, he has not ruled on the uh, Trump violating the gag order. Uh, I don't think he's going to send him to jail. He's going to slap him on the wrist and say, uh, pay a thousand dollars, which is peanuts to Trump peanuts. Uh, but just in case the Secret Service were preparing for that possibility, I think the biggest thing they have to prepare is installing the gold toilets into the prison. You know, I mean, even Trump is not going to be able to go unless he's got those gold toilets. I mean, it's that he's used to it. Uh, anyway. So that's that, you know, it's always something, isn't it? 
All right, all right. I need, I need the glasses. Let's talk a little sports. Yeah. The hell is going on here? Uh, yeah. I got to tell you, it sucks to get old. Uh, I was, uh, how many doctors did I see just this week? I saw an eye doctor, and there's something going on with my right eye. I got to go see a specialist in King of Prussia next week, a retina guy. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, retina this. That's all I tell retina this. And what they're going to do is going to be like a three hour appointment because they're going to put all kinds of crap in my eye, like uh, uh, eye drops and stuff. And my eyes going to dilate. So I can't see as it is. That doesn't make sense to me. I can't see as it is, and yet they're going to make it worse. Anyway, so now it's just a checkup. They're just going to see if the rest is there. I don't know. Anyway, uh, then I went down to see my my favorite doctor of all, Dr. Kalish, down the city in Philadelphia. What a beautiful day, huh? And the pen relays are down in Dale. And, you know, I, where I go is right near Franklin Field where the pen relays are being held, you know? I saw these two guys on the news the other day. I got to tell you about this. They were running. They used to, they were in the track team together in high school, like uh, 95 years ago or something. I'm so serious. These four old guys, and God bless them, they're down there at the pen relays and they're trying to run track you know, just like the old days back in 1920. And they're there hobbling. And I'm like, well, at least these guys are out there, right? At least they're trying. You know what I'm saying? One guy is a walker on the first <laughs> Yeah, anyway. So, speaking of sports. Uh, okay, let's start. Since I'm wearing evil thing tonight, let's start. They picked... Uh, a quarterback, first time in two decades. Quarterback in the first round, Quinlan Mitchell out of Toledo. 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 And uh, especially, well, I don't know anything about it. Especially, really good quarterback, one to four, three, six, four. I mean, this guy could do the loop. He accepts the balls, tackle, looks, and all that. And as it happened, Howie Roseman, who usually trains up on him. He did. He stayed at number 22, and he got his name. In fact, the Eagles had to pick a ready quarterback they wanted, which is unusual. Usually, quarterbacks. There he is. Now, what the hell are you doing? Wow. He's like a little tornado. I should, we should have named him Twister. Yeah, because he's in it. And there he goes, throwing the toy. And there he goes, scary. Uh, I wish I had him. Yes, 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 yes. Get him, Coco, get him. What a guy. So, Eagles, now they'll be drafting tonight, rounds two or three. They have two picks in the second round, pick 50 and pick 53. We'll see what they do. I, to me, I would be opposed to them drafting another quarterback, Ty. Because they really need to remake that secondary. If you remember the tragic Eagles season, they really, you know, James Bradbury lost a step or two. Darius Slay, he's not what he used to be. And the uh, secondary, really bad. So I wouldn't uh, be opposed to the Eagles uh, beefing up the secondary even more in the next two days. Um, they have a lot of draft picks. Wouldn't be surprised, Harry Roseman, he can't use all those draft picks. He can't pay all those guys. There's no room on the team. There he goes. Yo, there he is. I wouldn't blame him. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he packaged some of these picks and moved up a little bit. There he goes. Um. Anyway, so uh, Eagles got their band. I'm happy for them. And uh, we'll see what happens in the next two days, right? Sixers, Sixers, go Sixers. They won last night, which wasn't a surprise to me. They had to win. They were down 0-2 to the New York Knickerbockers. And what the hell is going on? 
all these New York fans down at the game behind the Knicks bench. It sounded like a Nick home crowd out down there. What are the Sixers doing selling these tickets to all these New York fans? Ah, 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 it's fine. It's disgusting. Ah. Let's hope Sunday is different. Let's hope the Sixers fans show up and be loud. But Sixers needed to win, and he did. So now it's two to one. Joel and Dean had a great game. 50 points. 50. This guy, I don't care what they say about him on Sports Talk Radio, which is bogus anyway. Sports Talk Radio is becoming like this clickbait. Uh, like they, 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 they just say anything for a reaction, you know? They just want audience. Who cares about credibility anymore? Or whether you really believe in what you're saying, you're just uh, saying it for ratings. And that's what Sports Talk Radio was turning into. Uh, you know what? I don't even listen to it. I really don't. I gave it a try the other day. I listened to the afternoon, WIP, and I'm sorry I did. What a bunch of brutal, 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 brutal. Ah. If I listen to WIP, I listen to it. At night, when the old school guys are on, and my friend, Chief, Chief, Steve Trevelis, Rob Cherry, and those guys, you know? By the way, I hear my friend Glenn Macnow is retiring in the summer. Glenn Macnow, I reached out to you on Twitter the other day, and you reacted to me. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to see you, too. But I'm sorry to see you go. First Ray did injure now Glenn Macnow. It won't be the same. Saturday mornings won't be the same. I enjoyed Glenn because he was a no-nonsense sports guy. He didn't go for all this gimmicky stuff, clickbait stuff. He was sports. And he talked movies and he talked TV shows, yes. But he didn't go for all this foolishness. And he, so going back now, I'm going to miss you. But happy retirement to you. I hope you have a good retirement. Now, Sixers needed to win last night, and they did. Uh What's going to happen Sunday? Well, six. Oh, I know. Cut the idea. Sixers need to win again. <laughs> Just because they won last night doesn't mean it all means. If they if they lose Sunday, they're still down three to one, and they go back to New York. They have to win Sunday to even the series at two to two. Now you're going to New York, and anything can happen. Uh, you know, game five, in a seven-game series, game five is usually a critical game. Because it's usually, it's either 2-2, two, 3-1, two, you know, and, and uh, whoever wins game five usually wins the series. I look at the So, um, Sixers need to win on the And I think they will. Since you should have won the first game, should have won the second game, should have, could have, would have. I know, I know, mean, they didn't do it. But, Sixers were right there, right there with the Pittsburgh Bombers. So, uh, I'd love to see a beat, you know, because of these stupid New York fans who come down here and these celebrities, Spike Lee, oh, Jesus, Ben Stiller, all these other guys up there just sitting around, John McElroy. Stop already. Stop, stop. We have our own fans. Like, uh, who? M. Night Shyamalan. He's usually there. M. Night. Yes, Hardy, yes. That toy, it keeps running up and running. Up. This is what the storm does. It falls down home. Yeah, you know that? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so go Sixers. Um, Billies. Billies are in San Diego this weekend. Now, you know, they usually have good luck in San Diego. You remember two years ago when the Phillies played the Padres to be a National League Championship Series? No problem. No problem. Uh, actually, Petco Park, San Diego, the Phillies have, that's the best stadium, the, the best record of any road, road stadium, any uh, in, in the National League for the Phillies. 
They usually play well out in San Diego. So to me, I wouldn't be surprised if they took a two out of three, maybe over the weekend, right? Two out of three. Zach Wheeler we pitched great yesterday. Shut out, eight innings, but not eight strikeouts, six innings. Hey, how about that Ranger Suarez, huh? Great, great. Noah, great, great. The starting pitching has been outstanding. Do not take, don't mess with it, Billy. Just because this Taiwan Walker guy is coming back off of injury, he sucks. Don't put him into the starting rotation. Who cares? He's only going in because the Phillies made the mistake of giving this guy a lot of money. You know, when he was with the Mets, he wasn't that good anyway. I don't know why Dave Dabrowski brought him on board. Paid him like, what, $80 million? And uh, they're stuck with him. Nobody wants him. Don't screw up the team. Christopher Sanchez is okay as the four star. Spencer Turnbull has done a great job as the fifth starter. Don't take him out of the rotation. What the hell are you doing? He calls it Taiwan Walker. Ugh. Anyway, I screwed up yesterday. Bryce Harper, congratulations, Bryce Harper. He and his wife had a baby. Came back. Bryce Harper came back yesterday. First came back. If I was thinking, I would have put a few bucks on Bryce Harper to hit a home run, which he did. Why? Because guys, when after they have baby, not, not them, the wife, uh, after the wife has baby, they usually come back, hit a home run for the baby. They're very happy. And uh, yeah, I didn't think that way. In fact, the last time the, the Harpers had a baby, the game uh, that Har uh, Bryce Harper returned, he hit a home run. So it's happened before. If my brain cells were firing, you know, all firing up here, I would have remembered that, and I would have said, you know what, I'm going to put a dollar on Bryce Harper hitting a home run. And he did. <laughs> Who would have thought? But, you know, that's what happens when you're 187 years old. You forget it. It's still interesting. So, you know what? Philadelphia sports is in a good way as I speak to you today. Uh, there he is. Go, 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 go. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't he beautiful, though? See, do you see why I named him? Go, 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 go. I got to keep an eye on him because I don't know what the hell he said. No, no, go, no, no, no. Leave that alone. Leave that alone. This goes on all friggin' day. All friggin' day. There he is. Go, 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 go. Um, Philadelphia sports is in a good way. The Eagles are getting reinforcements for uh, for this fall. You know, don't forget, nobody has won the NFC East two years in a row since in 20 years. The Cowboys won it last year. They're due not to win it. It's the Eagles' turn to win it. Get back to the playoffs and never know what can happen, right? Eagles are, and they just extended A.J. Brown. That's a great move. A.J. Brown, I know sometimes he's a diva, sometimes he could be a pain in the ass, but A.J. Brown deserves it. You know what I've told you on this program before. They should target A.J. Brown at least 15 times a game. Maybe he catches 10 of those. 10 balls, maybe 100 yards every game. Come on, man. You got one of the best receivers in pro football, and you're not using them anymore. I know you got Devontae Smith. That's, he's great. You got Dallas Goddard. He's great. Now you got Saquon Barkley. He's great. There's only one football to go around, but you don't have another guy like A.J. Brown. He's unique. He's big and he's fast and he's strong. He's in his prime. You got to use him. That's why you pay him. That's why you gave up a first round draft to, to get him. Okay. Use him, use him. So I'm glad the Eagles extended him. Maybe he'll just shut up and he'll play football. Okay. There you go. Phillies are in a good way. Atlanta has a lot of injuries, even though they're still playing great. Uh, the Mets are doing okay, but you know how the Mets are. Eventually they'll crumble. 
and uh, the dots, the, the nostrils, and the moorlands are they're not they're, forget that. Phillies can take this division this year, and uh, I actually think they will. I think they're going to take Atlanta and they're going to win the division. But that's just me. And the Sixers climb out of the hole, beat the Knicks, go on to uh, at least get to the Eastern Conference Finals, play the Celtics. You know what? The Celtics are not invincible. Everybody's saying Celtics, Celtics, Celtics. Guess what? The mighty Boston Celtics lost at home to the Miami Heat the other night, and their series is tied 1-1. One -one. And that was without Jimmy Butler. The Heat, they're like an annoying thing for thorn in your, in your foot or something. They're always there, aren't they? They're always there to have a great coach, and they play hard, and they play great defense. So, uh, you know, I think the Celtics will beat the Heat eventually, but um, Eagle, uh, yeah, Sixers, if they play the Celtics, I'd give them a fighting chance, especially if the beat is okay. And he's playing the way he's doing. So look, that's that. It's my favorite time of the year. Oh my God, because the Kentucky Derby is running next Saturday. You got the Indianapolis 500 coming up. You've got the, you have the Masters just occurred. You've got the hockey playoffs. You got, oh my God, all kinds of things going on. Not only is it a great sports time of the year, but it's spring, right? It's, it's a little chilly here today, but it's going to be in the 80s next week. Everything's coming out. The dogwoods, the forsythia, everything is out. So it's a great time to be here. All right, all right. I'll stop. Stop. Uh, Coco's taking a nap. So while he's doing that, gives me a chance to use this. That's it's our classic TV show of the week, and we're going to talk about it. All right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to sing the theme song like I usually do. Chances are I'm going to screw it up like I usually do. But you're going to get to know this song. You know this program. You know it. And you know this song. You ready? <laughs> All right, here it goes. Go, go. This is your first time hearing this. Like, I, boy, I don't think I've sung the Coco since he's been with us. And he's been with us for... Uh, since last Saturday, that's six days. Is all right, Coco. This is going to be a really, a really, real treat for you. So enjoy, okay? <clears throat> and you enjoy too. Welcome back. Your dreams are your ticking now. Welcome back to that same old place that you knocked about. The days have been changed. Is it run around? And the dreams are the cafes that are like, this sucks. What did I come here for? Da, 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 da. Who I thought to need a who I thought to need. Right there, were we need? Right there, were we? Yes, we tease him a lot, but we've got him on the spot. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes, we tease him a lot. Welcome, Coco. Because we got him on the spot, Katie. Welcome back. Welcome. All right, no, that's enough of that shit. It is Welcome Back, Cotter. That's our show this week. Now, the reason I picked Welcome Back, Cotter was because I saw a recent reunion of uh, John Travolta, who played Vinnie Barbarino, and, uh, and uh, the guy who played Freddie Boo Boo Washington. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, or whatever it is. He, uh, <clears throat> they, uh, Travolta was giving an interview somewhere in Hollywood. And who doesn't come up from behind him? You'll have to Google this. Was what, uh, his former TV sweat hog, uh, Boo Boo Washington. And he surprises them and they hug and they're like, how you doing? Blah, blah. Like they haven't seen each other in a long time, you know? And this is a big thing because they're the only two sweat hogs left. Yeah. I mean, in fact, along with Travolta and Freddie Booger Washington, the only other cast member of Welcome Back Cotter who's surviving is Gabe Kapler himself. So it was 
So when I saw this interview, this little reunion, I thought, well, oh, this would be a good thing. Let's talk about Welcome Back Hunter. I love that show. It was on from 75 to 79. And it, the, the premise was this teacher, played by Gabe Kaplan, uh, goes back to his old high school and is a social su studies teacher. And he's specifically teaching the sort of the underachievers, the low lives of the school, the really pinheads, the really, the, the really bad students, you know? And their names are, are the sweat hogs. Well, he was a sweat hog too, Gabe Kaplan in, in, in the story. And that was his goal to go back to the high school and teach other kids. And maybe they would uh, rise above their sweat hog uh, status and uh, become something, right? So that's the premise. And uh, so actually it was based on uh, Kaplan's, we're, we're going to talk about that. Kaplan's, uh, Gabe Kaplan, Kaplan, why do I keep calling him Kaplan? Like Gabe Kaplan, the, the, the manager, the former manager of the Phillies. That guy, Gabe Kaplan. No, no, his name is Gabe Kaplan. Gabe Kaplan, the comedian. He was a stand-up comedian. And then he, uh, oh, there's Katie. And then he, he created the show, Welcome Back, Connie. All right, all right, here we go. Uh, if you remember, uh, there were 95 episodes of Welcome Back, Connie. That's a lot of episodes when you think about it. The theme song was written by and performed by John Sebastian, the lead singer of The Loving Spoonful. Remember that? Do you believe in magic? Da da da. Hot day, silver in the city. Back of my neck, can you feel it? Gritty. John Sebastian wrote the song, Welcome Back, Carter, which happened to be a hit. Uh, the show is on ABC, and uh, the, the primary time slot was Thursday at 8 o'clock. Now, they moved the show around, of course. You know, that's what they do. When the show is, uh, the ratings are declining, they'll put it on another day to see if it catches on with the different ones. Uh, and really, really, the show didn't ever really, even though it's popular with kids and teenagers, uh, it never really got was a ratings uh winner you know never made the top 10 um just was there <laughs> you know just was there it lasted four seasons and the second season was the best as far as ratings are concerned after the second season it started going downhill and we're going to talk a little bit about that why welcome back cotter eventually got canceled now, the, uh, the name of the high school where the sweat hogs uh, were living was uh, James Buchanan High School in the uh, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. That's where this, this whole thing was set up. Uh, and it was, it was a social studies class. And the four main sweat hogs, Minnie Barbarino, played by John Travolta. Uh, let me tell you about this. Travolta already did the movie Carrie, Stephen King movie Carrie, which was 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 a hit. Uh, he did that before the Sweat Hogs. He did a couple of roles before that, but uh, really, Minnie Barbarito was the role that kind of brought him uh, out of the shadows, so to speak. And what happened was. Travolta stayed with the show pretty much due to four, the four seasons. Um, in the fourth season, uh, Travolta uh, just appeared in 10 of the 15 episodes. He started weeding his way off the show. Why? Because by then, Travolta had made Saturday Night Fever and was filming Grease. And uh, so John Travolta was turning into this mega superstar. God, you know, he was... He was uh, nominated for Academy Award for his role in, in Saturday Night Fever. He was this heartthrob. And here he is doing this little pit, pit in some uh, TV show, playing this dopey 
oh, uh, Vinnie Barbarino. And uh, so, and he was only paid, get this, in the, in, in the final season of Welcome Back, Connor, Travolta was only paid $2,000 an episode. Now, to me, $2,000 is a lot of money, you know? Imagine what I can do with $2,000. I can buy, buy more dog toys. Or, 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 Coco over there. There it is. But uh, to, to Travolta, this was peanuts, especially since he was making the big, the big money from Saturday Night Fever in Greece. So you got Vinnie Barbarino, and Vinnie, Vinnie is from a Catholic Italian family, and uh, he was the one who came up with things. He, he had a lot of insults, like all the sweat hogs did. That was like their big thing. You insult somebody, they insult you, back and forth and back and forth. There's a couple of them. Up your nose with a rubber hose. You remember that one? Off my case, toilet face. There you go. So, words of wisdom. That's what I say. Uh, <laughs> so, Barbarino was a, he was a, he was a card. I love Vinny, the character of Vinny Barbarino, I love. Because he would uh, dance around, he'd think he'd re he was really cool, but he was really this dokey, dokey, dokey guy. And when things got too overwhelming for him on the show, he would just sort of cut off in a ball and say, I am so confused. That's the video for me. Uh, we've talked about Freddie Boo Boo Washington. Well, Freddie Boo Boo Washington, uh, Mr. Cotton, he would, he would call him Kathleen. And uh, he was the star basketball player on the Buchanan High basketball team. That was his claim to fame. And uh, actually, Washington got, uh, he sort of got out of the uh, slums too by becoming a DJ. He followed the path of another sweat hog whose name was Wally Wexler uh, before we knew the sweat hogs, way back when, and who was ha happened to be played by George Carlin. Yes, George Carlin played Wally Wexler. Uh, he was only in like a few episodes, but um, and then you had Juan Epstein, the uh, the guy who was voted most likely to kill somebody. <laughs> uh, he was sort of like the really thug hoodlum of the uh, of the ship. And he, and whenever he'd be like for school, he would write an excuse. Please excuse Epstein for being late. Signed Epstein's mother. And it was a running game. And finally, you had Arnold Horshack, the sort of the really dirty sweat hog of the group. And he had this nasally voice. Ah, and he would uh, laugh <laughs> like a hyena. Well, Ron Palillo, who played uh, Horshack, said he actually got the idea for that laugh from his dad, who, uh, because he had emphysema, this isn't funny, but it's true. Uh, used to breathe like that. <laughs> so Horshack started getting rough. Uh, some other characters in the show were Julie, who was uh, Gabe Kaplan's uh, uh, wife, who was in almost every episode because <clears throat> she was very supportive of him, but she got pissed because as Kaplan uh, grew closer to the sweat hogs, they tried to become like their friend, you know? Uh, she got pissed because the sweat hogs would visit their apartment and just kind of sort of take over, come in to watch TV, use to open the refrigerator, and they would come in via the fire escape you know, through the window. At any time of night, day or night, Maybe the Kaplans were in bed or whatever, and here come the sweat on. That was a runny joke, too. And the principal of Buchanan High School was Mr. Woodman. It was this little white-haired guy, really a grouchy guy. Sort of. He hated the sweat hogs. He said there were the regular students, and then there were the sweat hogs. And he was just wait, waiting for the sweat hogs to eventually 
be arrested or expelled from school. And it was sort of like his uh, his goal in life to uh, get rid of the sweat hogs once and for all. And actually, not many people knew it, but he was a social studies teacher. In fact, he was Gabe Kaplan's teacher when, when Gabe was at the kid at high, when Gabe was a swim. So there you go. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, yeah, we talked about uh, season four. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. So the rating started to go down in season, after season two. I mean, it was pretty funny. The show was pretty funny. If you watch it, if you go back and check out the reruns, the show was really, really funny the first two seasons. It stopped being as funny in season three. Why? Because, number one, the main writers left the show after season two. It was a money thing, and they moved on. There was all kinds of problems. And then Gabe Kaplan himself had a dispute with the producers. He left the show for a while because of money. And then they had a dispute on the set because uh, they had they actually had a real teacher on the set at all times of Welcome Back, Cotter. Why? Because the teachers union put a real teacher there because they thought that... Uh, that the uh, sweat hogs and the uh, Catholic character of the teacher were might be a bad influence on real teachers and real students. And uh, Kaplan came up with the quote. He said, well, you don't have a real junk man on the set of Sanford and Son, do you? I mean, which is which he was right. You know, but they, they, all those fears kind of eased after a while. Because people started realizing that the sweat hogs weren't really violent. You know, they were afraid these guys were going to like murder people. Yeah, it's a comedy show. Come on. You know, but uh, no, they weren't violent. They just did stupid stuff. You know, stupid. Uh, so what happened was, yes. Yes, Travolta left the show when he became too famous. There were all kinds of problems. And Gabe Kaplan said, you know what happened to the show? The Sweat Hogs outgrew it. Because here you have Ron Palillo, who played Arnold Horshack, was actually close to 30 years old. John Travolta, who played Vinny Barbarino, at the time was 25. And uh, Travolta was the youngest Sweat Hog. See, you had guys playing like 10 years over their uh, real real characters, you know? And people caught on to it. They were like, yeah, right, you know? This is a guy like uh, 10, it's close to 30 years old. Come on, stop. And it wasn't as funny as it used to be. I will, I will say that uh, they did take Travolta's character a little further. He moved out of his uh, out of his uh, family home, and he got his own apartment, Mini Barbarino, and that was a running gag. Mini Barbarino, he got a job as a hospital orderly, and I remember so many episodes where he's pushing guys in wheelchair, and he's he's racing down the hall, you know, or the bedpan. He would he did, like use it as a frisbee or something. It was just it was crazy stuff. But uh, Vinny had a small apartment, and the bed would always come down out of the wall. That was a running gag, and whatever. Uh, and you know, you remember when we talked about the Brady Bunch about uh, six weeks ago, and we said the Oliver effect, that uh, TV shows, if you came after that, known as the Oliver effect, where if the ratings are declining and a show really stinks, the producers bring in a new character to try to beef up the show a little bit, put some new blood in the show, so to speak. And they, they did it in the Brady Bunch with this Oliver kid, and even everybody hated him. They hated his guts because he seemed like an outsider into the Brady Bunch, right? Ah. They tried to do the same thing 
with Welcome Back, Kai. They tried to introduce a new character. His name was Bo de la Bra. And uh, he was from the South. And because ratings were low in the South, and they thought if they brought in a heartthrob, this guy had blonde hair. Uh, when Travolta left, that would keep the uh, girls interested in the show and maybe attract some people from the South. So this guy had a Southern accent. It didn't work. They hated the guy just like they hated Oliver. And who knows where he is now, right? So there you go. So eventually, the show, there was no, uh, there was no final episode of Welcome Back, Connor. It just stopped. It just stopped because at the end of the 1979 season four, the ratings were tagging and they just could stop the show. There was talk of, of a spinoff, two spinoffs. They were going to do a spinoff on Arnold Horshap's life. Because in the, in the, in the season four of Welcome Back Cotter, Arnold Horshack actually gets married. Can you believe that? He marries his girlfriend and they were actually going to do a spit on of their, their life. They decided, no, not a good idea, which was probably a good idea. And, uh, Robert Hedges, who played Epstein, said on a talk show in the nineties that there were talks of, uh, doing, um, other shows would be sweat bombs. And, and actually, there was an idea from Gabe himself that uh, if the sweat hogs are getting too old, let's take them to community college. The sweat hogs in community college, and Gabe would get a teaching gig there so that he could follow the sweat hogs all the way to graduation. It did. Yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> Anyway, that's welcome back, Poe. Um, Epstein, the guy who played Epstein and uh, Rod Pavillo, who played Martin Bullshack, they both died in 2012. Uh, Kathleen's wife uh, passed away. Mr. Woodman passed away. As I said, the only remaining people from that show are Gabe Kathleen, Gap Kathleen, whatever. Uh, John Travolta, as we know. And uh, Freddie Boo Boo Washington. All right. Well, next week we'll come up with another classic TV show. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed meeting the great Coco, who is there. I get my big head out anyway. There he is. The little guy's actually socking out. Him. He's seeping. Choo choo. There he is. Thank God. It gives Daddy me a chance to catch my ball. Ha, ha, ha. You know what? He's keeping us young. You know, that's how I look at it. And uh, it's good to have a puppy. You know, I'm looking at this one. I don't know why I whispered. Uh, this may be the last dog I want on your head. You know? We'll get up there. So uh, we're, we're enjoying Katie, you know? Katie, she's in her prime. And we love Katie. And we need a cookbook. You know, so, um, you know, you got to enjoy life and you have to live in the moment. And, uh, and it's what you got to do. But as I said, we'll never forget our buddy. Oh, good. There he is. The monster himself, Whiskey Tug Bear. Yes. Well, listen, it was great to be back again. And I don't do a podcast every day. Because uh, it would be cause. <laughs> but I like to come back maybe once or twice a week and do something, okay? It helps me, and I hope it helps you too. All right? So thanks for tuning in. Uh, go Phillies in San Diego tonight. Go Sixers on Sunday. You need to beat those Knicks. And uh, go Eagles tonight and tomorrow in the draft. Draft some studs. Draft wisely. I want to. I, I want to beat the Cowboys this year. You know, isn't it amazing? No matter what happens, all during the football season, as long as we beat the Dallas Cowboys, the stinking rotten Dallas Cowboys, we're happy. We're happy guys. Aren't we? Happy Cowboys.
Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you soon. Peace and love from me and the Coco. Take care. Bye.